Alex does a lot of stuff right in his week. He wakes up early, he hits the cold shower, he works out in the gym. His self-control in these areas is always something marveled at by his friends. Yet Alex still feels a deep shame. Shame for his lack of control in the sexual arena. A shame which he knows contributes to a very mediocre life. You are not going to be privy to this information elsewhere. You know what really gets me? It's the stories. It's the stories in our community, right? In our private discord, whereby it's the same stories as Alex. You know, really ambitious guys, young guys doing a lot right in their lives. Makes my heart swell, first and foremost. Eating right. I'm going to the gym, Joseph. I'm going five days a week. I'm on a push, pull, leg split. I adore it. I'm, I'm trying to read books like yourself, Joseph. I'm inspired by you know your, your library and you reading and being articulate. And again, don't make me blush, but it's really lovely when I hear these messages. But then here's the one that really I identify so, so much with. I have so much empathy because I was in exactly the same position as them. They go, I'm doing all this stuff, but you know, li life's, life's tolerable. It's tolerable, but I don't like that word. I don't want to tolerate life. I want to make love to life. I want to put life in different positions. I want to penetrate life deeply. And I want her to yield to, to me, to me. And how, how do I make that jump? How do I make that jump from life just being tolerable and me becoming the master of my reality to transurf it, to jump into a timeline, into a consciousness of myself where I have that kind of dominion over everything. What is the difference? And the difference, I'm, I'll share with you the secret. I'm, I'll give it away. I'll give it away at the end, right? Because the reasoning is important because if I give you it, you, you need to convince yourself. I had to convince myself. I had to read the lesson I'm going to share with you at the end multiple, multiple times before I understood it. It is a process, it is a journey, it is a rationalizing, it is a theorizing, if you would, masculine theory. And it's all energetical. It's all energetical and in that way, you can make some very close relationships with energy and emotion because energy or emotion is energy in motion, emotion, energy in motion, right? Once you make that connection and once you realize men have such a, such a, a, a horrendous relationship with the sexual dimension of their personality and the emotion of shame. Shame, by the way, is the lowest emotion a human being can feel. It oscillates and vibrates so low that it is, in my opinion, hell. That's what I believe hell is. It is being in a state of shame. I was just reading um, David Hawkins here, Letting Go, which is again, part of the rationalization you are need to are going to need to go through until you understand this concept around celibacy, being able to change the metaphysical fabric of your reality. Because shame, where does shame oscillate? Shame oscillates at the same level as humiliation. I'm not sure if you can see it there. But that is, that is hell. That is an emotional hell. That is real hell, in my personal opinion. And you can be doing everything right. You can be doing the aforementioned things and still not move out of that state if you haven't tamed your sexual dimension. So I have a story for you. I'm gonna share with you a story. A story of an individual who went down that path and is equally experiencing some of the things that I have been alluding to in that little speech there, that little mini lecture here. So here we go. Metaphysical benefits of being on SR. Hopefully you should all know what that stands for for now. I'm trying to get back into SR and embrace a better lifestyle overall. In my early 20s, I was a self-improvement machine, constantly reading books on personal development. I religiously lifted every other day for years and engaged in a slow state of cardio for hours on my off days of lift, lifting. Like I say, it makes my heart swell because there are still men whereby their testosterone hasn't been crushed out of those satanic nine principles that I shared in a, in a later video. You should, you should look for that, by the way. You need to eliminate those things if you're gonna maximize your masculine power. I took around 20 supplements a day. My, 
might be overkill there, my friend. You cannot supplement your way out of a poor lifestyle. I think your supplement stack, I mean, I don't think it should be beyond seven. Mine certainly isn't beyond five, I don't think. Let me know if you want me to do a, a, a supplement stack uh, optimization performance video. I think that'll be interesting to do. Maybe I'll do it without your consent, but let me know anyway. Focusing on fresh meat, veggies, excellent. I experimented with fasting, marvelous, OMAD, one meal a day, all these changes made me feel tremendous and I completely transformed my life. However, I kept searching for more, leading me to discover SR. This is, again, I have such relatability with this because this is exactly what I was on because I got addicted to the results from the gym, from fasting, from prayer, from meditation. And then I wanted, I didn't just want to be content. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a mystic. I wanted to be an occultist. I wanted to have reality bend to my will. And you can only know that through the energet, how, how things work energetically and how you warp the, what would you say, the fabric of your life around that principle. At that time, I was single due to a breakup that triggered my initial major lifestyle changes. Oh, how the breaking of the heart can send you on a trajectory that improves your life in areas that you would never have dreamed of but i still unfortunately this individual is still engaging in that illicit material trying sr for about four days i noticed that colors seemed more vivid and looking at the world started to feel like observing a beautiful painting it was an amazing experience over the years i drifted away from this lifestyle but now i'm making a comeback i recently made a post asking if retaining while gambling has helped anyone win big and half the responses treated it like a joke or thought I was an idiot. Despite this, I genuinely believe in the metaphysical benefits of this lifestyle with the most obvious one being an enhanced animal attraction. So this, is a, this is an interesting story that I have some, uh, what would you say, some relatability with. This is gonna sound strange, but I think it ties into this idea that there's a, there's a very, very interesting quote by Swami Vivekananda. And it goes something like this. When you renounce nature, you find that she starts to take an interest in you. When you renounce her a little bit more, she begins to chase you. And when you finally do not care for her whatsoever, she becomes your slave. And you're talking about a man who had memory powers and cognitions that were unparalleled to some of the greatest thinkers that you could ever conceive of in this moment and who advocated a conscious practice of sexual refrainment and celibacy in his life. Because attraction is something that many people experience and he, he notes it here, I could attribute attraction from women to my good looks, which resulted from my overall lifestyle before I was overweight, had bad skin and was insecure. And my outgoing personality, also a product of my overall lifestyle, because it was quiet and nervous previously, but self-improvement brought out that more extroverted, more assertive, more masculine quality in and of himself. However, when animals started flocking to him, he couldn't think about anything that could personally explain it. And we're starting to get into the, the title of the video, which is the metaphysical effects that celibacy has on your environment. Now again, I'm, I'm gonna share with you very, very soon what that looks like. But first, he recalls going to a friend's house with a pit bull, known to be aggressive, but the dog never growled or barked me once. Instead, it immediately snuggled up beside me, surprisingly, uh, surprising the owner, part of me, and those who knew the dog. He was asleep on me after knowing him for less than 10 minutes. During my walks in the park, I noticed that animals like squirrels and chipmunks would let me walk right up to them without them kind of skirting off. I'm not sharing this to claim that I'm super good looking and charismatic with superpowers because right now I'm not, I'm far from it, but I want to go back. I would like to use this thread to discuss the metaphysical benefits other for others have experienced from practicing conscious celibacy. So the one about the squirrels is really, really interesting. I think I've, I've said in a previous video that this happened to me before, but during streaks of celibacy, when I'm conscious, animals want to be in your auric field, your Taurus field might be another way to describe it. I've, I remember days where I, I go through a park to get to my gym, there's lots of squirrels in the park, and on you know, streaks beyond you know, two months, they would come down from the trees and they would 
follow me. And yeah, you can leave your jokes. Maybe they were after that nut or a different kind of nut. Pause, but this only ever happened to me when I was consciously using this tool. Same thing with dogs when I go to coffee shops uh, and, and uh, kids as well. I think that similar kind of like whimsical, playful, godlike, divine, pure energy, like a chak's like in that way. And they would just stare at you with their big eyes for ages and then they would come over to you and they you know, want to play and it's very, very cute. And uh, you know, dogs as well, they would just come over and almost be very docile, submissive kind of in their personality and temperament. And this is a, st a stark difference. And you could only never ever know this if you personally uh, have experienced long bouts of celibacy and the average man, unfortunately, hasn't experienced that. Now, I promised I would share with you, you know, why this is the case. And I like to explain, well, I'm gonna explain this point in a vernacular that's perhaps more palatable for your ear. And it's all about energy. Essentially, what is happening now is you are transcending shame. You are mitigating the presence of low frequency emotion and energy in your torus field, in your auric field, in your body, in your biology. And this is real. One of the ways, I mean, I referenced letting go here at the start and that chart, it's a scale of consciousness which is predicated on how strong muscles are in those particular energetic fields. Meaning when you're in shame, your muscles are weaker. And this is a tangible measurement that you can make but when you're in courage and joy in a higher emotion you are stronger they've done similar things in the past where they've put artificial and organic forms of like sugar or foods near somebody and got them to do a test and they would be weaker when the artificial food was in their auric field and stronger when you know more organic so i'm not talking wishy-washy here i'm talking real, measurable, tangible, tangible results happen in your life when you mitigate and start to dissect and pull the parasite of shame in your life through watching adult material, through engaging in a promiscuous lifestyle, and you start engaging you know, more holistically, higher positive emotions, and fundamentally embracing celibacy as a tool that you can use. Guys, I told you before, you're not gonna find this information anywhere. So. Do me a big favor, subscribe. It's completely free and it will bring tremendous value into your life. And if you wanna go a step further, if you wanna do your own reasoning, your own rationalizing, you can join the VIP community through my Patreon link below where you can get access to my personal library, to books, to resources, to lectures with myself and other members of this community who understand how real this is and how their lives have gone to zero to 100, I know that's cliche to say, in a very, very short time span. Or you can continue being cynical like I was and be content with mediocrity, but this will keep coming. God will keep knocking at the door, keep asking you when are you gonna open up your heart to recognizing that you don't wanna feel shame in your life anymore. You want control over your sexual reflex. It doesn't bring you pleasure to look at these dead-eyed women on the screen. And what you really want is a wholesome, holistic relationship with a reciprocal partner in that energy of love to create a family under the rubric of that love and self-actualize yourself and others in the light of your deity. Or you could just subscribe, I guess. These aren't theories, these are facts. Speak soon.